Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And it snowed again. <laughs> if you've been watching my episodes lately, you will know that this spring has been um, very hit or miss here in Edmonton. We get snow and then we get some really nice weather and it melts and then we get some more snow and then we get some really nice weather and it melts right now. We still have a little bit of snow on the ground and it's not the worst thing in the world. We are uh, a bit dry here right now, so any moisture is helpful, but honestly, I would love to see a little bit of rain, <laughs> just plain old rain. Um, and having said that, I probably will regret it one day, but honestly, a little bit of rain would be lovely. Have, oh my goodness, dog hair. Anybody else? Um, have you been? What's new with you? I have several things to catch you up on and uh, a couple things that have happened and, and one thing that is going to happen. And then I have a bunch of finished objects and a couple of things that I'm working on that I want to share with you. So let's dive in. Um, just uh, around the time that I posted my last video, I attended the Rose City Fiber Festival, which is a lovely little fiber event in the small city of Camrose, which is south and a little bit east of Edmonton, where I'm from. It's about an hour away. And it was, oh, I was gonna say it was a lovely drive, but it wasn't a lovely drive because it was snowing. Um, fortunately, I drove out with my ugh, dog hair. Um, fortunately, I drove out with my friend and we had a lovely drive with some really delicious coffee. And when we got to Camrose, uh, the Rose City event is held in an exhibition center. One side of the hall, like where the exhibition, I guess, side is, the more like um, hall-like side, that's where the Rose City um, Fire Festival was. On the Across the hall is a more agricultural kind of venue and they were ha having a llama show. And so before we went to see the yarn, we went and walked around and said hello to a bunch of llamas. There was some judging going on. Um, some llamas had already won some ribbons, um, but it was really, nice tie-in, I think, to see the animals that give us the fiber that we love to work with. Um, I'll insert a little bit of footage here of some of those animals. Uh, if you're really interested in the Rosie event, I did do a little video on my channel and it's posted here for you to view if you like. Um, so here's some of the alpacas. They were very cute. Most of them were um, adorable with sweet little haircuts. Some of them um, were smaller than I expected. I, I don't know why I thought that llamas were a bigger creature, um, but they were all very, very sweet looking, except for a couple of them that looked like they wanted to spit in my eye. I just gave them a lot of space. Um, all animals deserve our respect. So <laughs> so some of them, um, some of them looked adorable. Some of them looked curious. Some of them looked slightly pissed off and I just gave them all um, a curt nod and I kept going. Across the hall at the Rose City Fiber Festival, um, there was lots of, um, it was kind of a, I was going to say lots of vendors. There were a, quite a number of vendors, I think almost 40. I'm not sure if that's right, but um, there was a really great mix of different things. There was pottery, there was um, fiber for spinning. There was a lot of um, hand dyed yarns. There were bag makers. There was also some um, embroidery kits or um, sort of supplies that you could purchase. So there was a really nice mix of different vendors. Um, let me show you some of the things that I got. The first thing I got was a bag from um, one of my favorite bag makers. She is from a Berta, I think she's from Edmonton. Um, and her shop is called Studio Brita. I have, let me, this is my old Studio Brita bag that I use a ton, a ton, a ton. I know I just love it. She does this beautiful machine embroidery and then some patchwork quilting. Um, and this has absolutely been one of my favorite bags for a long time. So when I saw this bag with the adorable little llama on it, um, I really had to pick it up. Uh, just as a souvenir of the day and it's a great little sock bag again i have the one i have i've used so much and it's one of my favorites so i picked up this one again with a lot of beautiful machines to tree and then on the back 
some little <laughs> alpaca fabric. Uh, and on the inside, there's some sweet little flowers. So um, this is, for me, a lovely souvenir of that day that I will get to use a lot. Um, I was trying to be good. Um, I do have stash and I'm trying to work through it. And so I actually made myself a shopping list and I stuck to it. I was very proud of myself. Um, because I've been enjoying knitting socks out of Summer Lee's sock book, the sock project, if you haven't heard me rave about it, um, I made a list of some of the yarns I might need to make some more socks out of that book. So it was very targeted shopping. The first skein of yarn I got was from um, Ginger Snap. Let me see. Oh, I don't have my, I don't have my label on the yarn because I've already wound up and cast on. Um, I purchased some DK yarn, some DK sock yarn. So I'll show you the, I'll show you the yarn, but not the project. Ginger Snap has really, really, a really lovely DK base. I think she calls it her squishy DK. It's 75% super mush merino, but 25% nylon. So you know these socks are going to be harder wearing because of that nylon content. This beautiful color is called Blooming. Uh, and I just thought it was lovely. So this was one of the first things I picked up because I was so excited to find some DK sock yarn. And uh, Ginger Snap always has great stuff, no matter where she goes. One of the great things about um, Ginger Snap um, and Mr. Ginger Snap or Mr. Snap, they're a pair. Um, they, uh, they both have um, a beautiful booth with um, various dyed yarns and interesting dyeing techniques and also um, handmade bags. And so they do, a, they are a great combo and they support a lot, a lot, a lot of local events. In fact, they were at um, the, Cam the uh, Rose City Fiber Festival and they'll be at another event that I'm gonna be at in a week, which I'll tell you about soon. So that's from Ginger Snap. Uh, and then I, I did a lap and I looked at all the things and I tried to be very purposeful about what I was buying. So the next thing I got was another sock kit um, from a dyer I don't think I've used before. And this was my favorite. So this is the one I got. It's called, uh, the dyer is called Small Fish Yarn. And we spoke to her, she's from St. Albert. St. Albert is a city that's uh, right north of Edmonton. In fact, we're like, kissing sort of. So um, St. Albert is very close to me. And this is called um, Water Nymph. It is 80% uh, superwash merino, 20% nylon. That's this one, this beautiful speckle. And then the mini is uh, Opera Dahlia, I believe. It's this beautiful like fuchsia, almost purpley color, which I think is just beautiful with the aqua. And this also is 80% um, superwash nylon, 20, sorry, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it's a 25 gram uh, mini. So this is a kind of a plumper, a plumper yarn, I would say. In 115 grams, so slightly bigger skein, there are 420 yards or 383 meters. So it is a plumper fingering weight. And I think this is gonna make a beautiful, of socks. So I'm looking forward to using this. Um, and th those were the purchases that I made. Um, I did spend some time walking around, chatting with people I know, chatting with different vendors. Um, so that was a really, really great way to, to spend a morning. Um, my friend and I took some time to just sit and knit uh, and just enjoy sort of the atmosphere. It was, it was a really lovely event. And if you have the opportunity to go, I would recommend you do. They've just posted that it's going to be held on April 5th, uh, 2025. So if you're in the, um, I guess, central Alberta area, put that on your calendar. Um, but on one of my laps, uh, I was stopped by the lovely dyer of Ginger Snap and she asked if uh, I would like to have something to give away to my viewers and I said yes please um, partly because I want to share um, this event with you and partly because I was so delighted to be asked. I think that's the first time anyone's ever asked me uh, if I would like to have something to give away and I was 
delighted so I said yes so they gave me this beautiful sock set it is the Rose City signature colorway it's called you prickle my you prickle my fancy <laughs> isn't it sweet this green and um, you can see I think the green speckles here it's just so much fun there's the ginger snap logo there's mr. snap and ginger snap and this is a 75% superwash merino 25% nylon uh, it's a it's a beefy a beefy set. So the set total weight is 120 grams, so 120, and this is going to be plenty to make a sock set for you. So um, I'd like to give this away to one of you today. So what I'm going to ask you to do is please like and subscribe to my channel. Every time you hit the like button or you subscribe if you're a new viewer, uh, it helps me be seen by other people and I really appreciate it. In fact, when I get little likes, it just, it, it's sort of like um, confirmation that I'm doing a good job. So um, please like and subscribe this video. And in the, in the comments below, let me know what you would use this sock set for. It can be anything. I I would love to hear. Um, so let me know what you would what prickles your fancy, and uh, I will let you know in my next video in two weeks um, who is the lucky recipient of this beautiful sock set. Now the other thing that Ginger Snap was doing, um, and any purchase that was over, I think thirty dollars. So most people uh, were getting one of these beautiful little um, pouches. Let me show you how it's a. <laughs> little little pouch with these beautiful little triangle things and if you pull on them boop, it opens up so um, I'd like to give away this little um, pouch with the sock set so this little package would be yours just leave a comment below and let me know what you would make with this kit and again please like and subscribe because it does mean a lot to me and that is my summary of the Rose City Fiber Festival. Like I said, if you're interested in seeing the vendors who were there, or if you want more footage of the llamas, can't blame you, they're adorable, um, check out my video that I posted um, on the Rose City Fiber Festival. Okay, so that's that's the first thing that happened. Um, the next thing is, that happened was I got a tattoo. <laughs> um, this was sort of, I think, a while in the making. It's something I've been thinking about a lot for like a number of years. And it took me a while to figure out what I wanted. And then it took me a while to figure out the right person to do it. Uh, and then it took me a little while to get in to see her, but it's done. So let me show you. This is my brand new tattoo. Now it's about a week old, a little bit over a week old. So it's still healing. Uh, I have been moisturizing my forearm a lot. Like, I don't think my forearm has ever been this moist. And um, so let me tell you a little bit about my new tattoo and what it is and what it means to me. So I'm not sure if I've talked about it on this channel, um, but in my youth, I was a Ukrainian dancer. My parents are uh, of Ukrainian heritage and uh, Ukrainian dancing was a big thing for me. I danced probably from the age of five or six until I turned 20, I was in different groups and dancing took me lots of places. Um, in fact, I danced all over sort of Alberta for sure. And then I was fortunate to be involved in a group who went to uh, California and then we went to Australia. So I did have some really amazing opportunities with dance and I got to meet some amazing people. Um, one of the things that I wore when I danced was a, a Vishivanka, which is a Ukrainian embroidered blouse that was made by my mom and my, my Baba, my maternal grandmother. And each of them I embroidered a sleeve on my blouse. And when my mom was embroidering ours at, at my house, I asked, you know, she let me do a few stitches here or there. Um, so it, to me, it's sort of a special thing because it was uh, sort of tying my family together it also depicts a rose and two rosebuds, which for me depicts me and my daughters. So that's why it's special to me. It's done in a cross stitch style, which is very um, in keeping with the original. And it, this is in fact a, a copy of um, the blouse that I wore. So here's a picture of um, the embroidery from my blouse. 
just so that you can see it's it's exactly the same. The very special artist who did my tattoo, her name is Larissa. She works out of her own tattoo shop called Folklore. Um, she's a very special person. She's uh, an artist and a performer. She sings, she acts, and uh, she was a dancer herself. And so um, she was just the right person to do this tattoo for me. Um, so that's new. Now let's get on to the knitting because that's probably why you're here. I finished a ridiculous amount of things this past week and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So let's start with the first one and the biggest one. This is my Sabella sweater. Now this does not look anything like the pattern picture because the pattern picture had two color stripes and I of course went with one color, which is very not like me. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of horizontal stripes, but this is my Sabella oversized silk sweater. But let me put it on so you can actually see what it looks like. Before I give you um, a view of the whole sweater, let me just show you the neckline here. This is something I did change from the original pattern. The original pattern actually had no finishing at the neckline, but I did. I kind of had a feeling that this would be quite a gapy neckline, and I wanted it to have a bit of structure. Um, it is a lightweight and very drapey sweater, but I didn't want it to be, you know, stretching out. So. I picked up stitches all the way around the neckline and I did a row of knit one, purl one, and then I did a row of slip one with the yarn and back, purl one, which is what the instructions for the bottom hem were. And then I did an I core bind off using my fancy cordsmith tool. So that's the necklace. And this is the rest of the sweater move this out of the way so you can actually see. Um, it is quite a drapey fabric, I think you can see. This is the knitting, this is the knitting for olive, pure silk, in the ice blue color. Um, I made it very oversized, you can see. It's quite big. In fact, I could have done, gone down a size, but I do kind of like the oversized fit for summer. I think it'll be nice, um, like a nice layering piece that it won't be too heavy. The sleeves, as usual, are a bit long, but then I can do this and be really cute. Um, that's it. That's all of the details I have to tell you. Let me come back and discuss. So in the end, this sweater, I think, because I chose quite an oversized fit. It's got, I've got a lot of room in my armpit. So this is, hang on. This is where my anatomical armpit is. And this, whoa, is how much extra space I have. Is that a bad thing? No, I don't think so. In summer, it's nice to have that loose, lightweight, drapey fabric. If I were to knit this for myself again, I would likely go down a needle, or a, go down a size. Um, because it, if I were to knit this, let's say for winter, I wouldn't want quite so much drape or looseness. But it is... Um, it is a lovely layering piece and I think that it will be a great thing to just throw on for cool mornings or evenings. Um, so yes, this is the Sabella um, sweater. It is a pattern by Isabel Kramer and you will find links to this project and all the projects that I make in my show notes below. The next thing I finished was my Leap Year socks. This was a free pattern by Summer Lee and really um, I should be dedicating myself to the sock project book. Um, because I'm really excited about the patterns in there. But this came out and it was free and I really wanted to make them. So these are my Leap Year socks. And I think they're adorable. I used um, some West Yorkshire spin spinners in the milk bottle colorway. That's this white color. It's my favorite. I use it all the time. This is some Polka Dot Creek strawberry yarn. Again, I got a 100 gram skein of it and it is the skein that keeps on giving. I use it a lot for contrast in stripes often. Uh, it's just a really nice red. And what I did for this ribbing section to uh, avoid getting those little blips that you can sometimes get when you knit purl sections in color work stripes is that the first color, the first row of each color I just knit. And then from there on I worked the ribbing pattern. That gave me this very clean, stripey pattern without the little blips that can happen. Let me just show you the inside of that 
to maybe better illustrate. So here's the inside of my ribbing and I think you can see the blips here, <laughs> but not on the other side. And that's because every time I hit um, a, a change in color, I knit the first round and then I moved back to my, my ribbing, which in this case was knit two and purl one. The yarn I used for the main body of the sock is a little bit, was a little bit of a risk. It is a, um, a beautiful tweed yarn. This is by Polka Dot Creek. And it is a fingering weight tweed yarn that is 85% super wash merino and 15% nylon. So because it is super wash merino, that means it could wear not so well. But I'm gonna roll the dice and see how it goes because I really loved the tweedy bits and I want I just wanna see how it wears. So it could be that I'm darning these socks a lot I don't usually darn my socks, but if these ones wear out super fast, I probably will. That's the Leap Year sock, a sock by, who else, Summerlee. Um, and those are off my needles. I think these are super cute. So I'm looking forward to trying those out, and giving them a wear. And then um, the other thing I finished is my April socks. Um, I have placed a whole bunch of sock self-striping sock yarns in bags, one for each month, and each month I get to pick out uh, the bag for that month and knit up a pair of socks. A lot of those yarns have been sport weight um, sock sets that I had gotten from a dyer called Knit Spin Farm. This yarn is also from Knit Spin Farm, but it's a fingering weight and it is a Targi nylon. I'm gonna put the blend here because I can't remember off the top of my head, but let me just show you. This is Tongue Twister Contest Day. And uh, it's, they're really, really cute socks. I didn't have a contrasting color for the heels, cuffs and toes. So I just went with a really chunky heel. I did one full repeat of the pattern. And then you can see in between each color section are these like tiny little micro stripes of each of the three colors just to sort of divide it up, which is sort of interesting looking. I did an afterthought heel uh, and that's all. These are some very fun, again, very Rapunzel looking socks. Um, dyed by Knit Spin Farm and likely going in the gift sock basket for whoever needs some socks next. And that might be me or my kids or someone who comes to visit so more socks for the sock basket. The last thing that I had finished was a, um, I was gonna say it was a very uh, quick knit because it was, the knitting part was pretty quick. It was just the assembly that was a little more involved. Um, I decided to knit the Florence bag. This is a pattern by Petite Knit. Um, I had seen this pattern. I like a lot of her. I mean, I just like her aesthetic in general. And um, I liked the idea of knitting a bag. I had seen other crafters doing this, but I didn't realize that Petite Knit has her own shop. In her shop, you can purchase all of the habdashery, hab, haber, all the bits and pieces you need to make um, her designs. So when I saw that I could just purchase all of the things I needed, that that made this project a lot more accessible, which is very smart marketing, petite knit, well done. Um, so before I even bought the yarn to make this pattern, I had purchased the lining, which is, which is a pre-sewn lining that you stitch in. I had purchased the zipper I needed and I purchased that leather handle. Then one day I was at uh, a local yarn shop and I purchased some tin lina, which is a Sandus Garden yarn that is cotton, viscose, and linen blended. And you use that yarn held triple um, to make this yarn, this bag. So let me just show you my finished project. Let's do this bag. Oh, can we just agree that it turned out really great? It's a little... It's a little loud because the lining is a kind of a, I would say stiffer cotton, um, but check that out. So this is the stitch that you make. 
And I used this really lovely neutral color um, to make the bag. There are some decreases at the bottom. And then you assemble the bag. So the knitting part really didn't take that long. And the assembly, I just took my time because I decided I would rather do it while I had some patience and take my time than to do a bad job with it and not be happy with it. So the first thing you do, and the petite knit instructions are quite are reasonably clear. They're not written in, English is not um, this designer's first language. But having said that, they are very clear instructions. And with those instructions, you can find on her website videos for each step. The videos are not spoken in English, but they all have English subtitles. And reading the subtitles and watching her do uh, the techniques that she describes um, are very, very helpful in having a successfully finished bag. Um, the one thing I really like about those little YouTube videos is that you can pause them, you can rewind, you can go back, you can watch it again, you can read it, and then go back and watch it. Um, so I find those videos very helpful, and they're each quite short. Like, I think each video was about five minutes, so it wasn't overwhelming, um, but it was describing each technique, each step of the assembly, um, using subtitles and then watching somebody actually doing the assembly. So that was great. So once you've like knit the whole thing, you sew in the zipper, which she shows you how to do. And then once the zipper is in, you stitch the lining in, which okay, I'm, I'm just gonna toot my own horn here. I kind of think I did a not too bad job. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's, it's not too bad. All of this was hand sewn in. And again, I took my time and when I was starting to get like tired of it or feeling rushed or like, I just wanna get this done, I set it aside and then I came back. <clears throat> so once all of that is sewn in, uh, you block it. So I gave it a nice wash and then she suggests to block it with a towel inside, which I did. And then you sew on these leather handles, which you can also purchase from her website. So I did, um, I did the best I could, <laughs> um, sort of based on the picture of how she had sewn them on. And that's it, I'm done. This is my bag. I don't have anything in it. But I think, I think I'm quite happy with it. I'm fairly confident. I'm fairly confident. I could uh, take this to a yarny event or on a day out, it would fit my wallet, a phone, and likely a project. Let's just, let's test out that theory, shall we? Just take a, a project I'm working on that you will find out about later, chuck it in there. And it, I have tons of room, tons of room. Look at that. This is the larger of the, of the Florence bags. The petite knit, pardon me. The petite knit pattern does come in two sizes. So this is the larger one. And I did kind of aim for a bag that would be big enough to house a knitting project because why would you have a bag that couldn't do that, <laughs> really? Um, and this pattern also comes with um, instructions on how to make a pouch. Um, and a pouch is a small like envelope sized or envelope, I guess, shaped. It's more flat and rectangular, which I'm also going to make because I have some of that yarn left over and um, I purchased the lining and the zipper for that too. The other, um, I guess, recommendation I can make for you is uh, if you're not a sewer, because I'm not, um, now the, the pattern does show you how to make the lining. If you are a sewer and you wanna do that, you can make your own. Um, or you can purchase it from the Petite Knit website. And I found that the materials and the postage were quite reasonably priced for what I was getting. So that is the Florence bag. It is a pattern by Petite Knit. And I will be making the little pouch in future. So you'll be able to see the whole set. And those are all my finished objects right now. I have a couple of things that I've been working on um, that I just started in the last couple of days. The first one is a pair of socks in that beautiful squishy DK that I showed you earlier. This is this is a pattern from the Summerlee book. And 
I had cast them on and showed my daughter, my older daughter, who really likes a soft and squishy sock. Um, and she said, oh, are those shorties? And I said, well, they're gonna be shorties, yeah. She goes, oh, I like a, a taller sock. So these may have been usurped. I may be knitting them taller for her. <laughs> so this is the my not so shorty, shorty DK sock from the Sock Project book. I cast on and did the ribbing and uh, I'm working on Magic Loop, which is not my normal, but I don't have any of the DPNs in this size that I like to use. So I thought, well, I can use Magic Loop and that'll be good practice for me. This is, let's tuck that tail in. Again, this is the Bloom and Colorway by Ginger Snap. It's beautiful. I highly recommend this yarn. I might get some more. Um, and I cast on 48 stitches, followed the pattern. I'm using 3.25 millimeter needles. And um, these socks will just be knit plain. I believe they have a sh German short row heel. One of the things I like about this sock book is that it's encouraging me to try different techniques. I'm not used to doing a German short row heel. That's fine, I can do it. Um, I'll just follow the instructions from summer and enjoy every minute of it. So these are gonna have a longer leg, probably maybe f a five inch leg. I just wanna make them long enough so that she's not complaining that her ankles are cold. Then there'll be a German short row heel, and then I will continue using this beautiful yarn until I get to the toe, and I'll have a contrasting colored toe. The yarn I'm going to use for the toe is not DK, it's a fingering weight, um, but I'm going to hold it double, and that should do nicely. This is a color called Polar... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's called Purple Pop. It's one of those little minis that I picked up from um, Polka Dot Creek when I was there in March, and I think that this the toe on these socks it's going to be super fun so i'm working on some dk socks i think they'll be fun they'll probably be for my daughter um who just turned 18 that was weird and weird things that happened in the last couple of weeks i now have an adult child the last thing i'm working on <clears throat> i just started yesterday and this is the flip side t um let me show you a picture of it because what i've knit is not very much the Flipside Tee is a really cute t-shirt pattern by Tannis of Tannis Fiber Arts. I am using some Ritual Dye Works Undine in the natural color. Let me show you what that looks like. This is a cotton and linen blend and it's a fingering weight yarn that I, oh, look at that beautiful little hole in the middle. Um, I've never used this yarn before and so part of this is an experiment on how I like this yarn. And let me just show you what I've done. Again, uh, it's not very much. I have just all nearly completed the short rows. So this, this is what I've got. I have a little bit of knitting bunched up on a needle. Not very much. Um, but I, what I wanted to show you was um, I'm nearly done the short row shaping, um, which raises the back of your sweater up a little bit above the front. And I just wanted to show you how much you can get out of your short row shaping. So this is the back. It's the the depth of the back and this little tiny bit of knitting here is the front. <laughs> so you can see how much depth um, is added by doing these short rows. And it just helps the, the sweater to fit nicely on your body. This sweater has some short rows. It raises the back a little bit. Um, this one I think will sit nicely as a crew neck. So I'm making this in one color. I have three skeins of the Undine. Um, the Undine comes as a 100 gram skein, and I believe it's 385 yards, three of them, which should be plenty to make a t-shirt. So that is something I'm working on right now. And really, that's all I have on my needles, a pair of socks and a cute t-shirt. Um, there's a couple things I wanted to share with you. Um, just delightful, one delightful thing and one thing I'm looking forward to. So I went to um, my local knit night um, just this past week and I saw somebody, uh, one of the knitters who I have known on and off for a long time. We've sort of, our paths have crossed in different ways. Um, she's a nurse, I'm a pharmacist. We used to work in the same place um, and we're both knitters. And so we see each other at different knitting things, but she made me a set of stitch markers. Isn't that so thoughtful? So I just wanted to show you some of them because they're adorable. I, there's a couple of gummy bears, which is very sweet. 
a couple of stitch markers that say, I, can you read that? I love knitting. There's a sheep. There's a little, oh, this cute little rainbow with a cloud. Um, a cup of coffee, because who doesn't need a cup of coffee when they're knitting? And finally, the one that was perhaps the most appropriate, because it is what I order every time we have a knit night, and that is a glass of red wine. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you very much, Michelle, for your very thoughtful gift. I love them and I'll be using them a lot. The last thing I wanted to share with you is that um, on local yarn store day, which is at the end of April, April 27th this year, um, the Yarn Rebels, which is a local group of knitters here in Edmonton, is having um, a yarn tour. It's called the VIP tour. We're taking a bus from, we're starting at one yarn store and we're going to four yarn stores in total. We're stopping for lunch at a brewery. So we're gonna have tacos and beer. And it was announced in the last couple of weeks that I'm going to be the tour guide. So I'm very excited to be joining the Yarn Rebels for this event. Um, many of you may, if you're local to Edmonton, you may be even be coming on the bus with us. Um, so I'm really looking forward to visiting some shops. I'm going to try and support as many as I can. And I hope to see some of you out and about either on the bus or maybe at some of the shops here in Edmonton. If you don't live in Edmonton, I hope you get out to support your local yarn store. Um, they're businesses and they're some of our favorite businesses. So let's keep them going in any way we can. And spending money isn't the only way that you can support local businesses. A great way to support local businesses if you're on a budget is to share um, their social media feeds, to talk about them, to let friends know about them. Um, so there's lots of ways to support our local businesses, but they are very important um, to, to the crafting community. So if you can support your local yarn store on April 27th, I strongly encourage you to do so, whether that's um, by telling other people about it, by sharing their social media, or by going in and making a visit yourself. I hope that in the next couple of weeks, you have time to do the things you like to do. I hope that um, you have a local yarn store that you like, that you want to support. And I hope that you get to work on some of the projects that you like to do. I know I plan on knitting a lot. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.